This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome to our exotic uh, Honolulu, Hawaii. And uh, we're actually going to go uh, when Hawaii was the most exotic, which was actually mid-century. And today we're going to talk particularly about the 50s and the 60s. And um, a couple shows ago, actually pretty much at the beginning of this show, uh, as we see in the first picture, that was a show with Bill Chapman. And um, he insisted that I have the courtesy and copyright for the title of the show, which was called Howley Hawaii. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm happy to take the blame. I'm used to that. So here you can see three people. From left to right, you see Pete Wimberly. And uh, excuse me, you see uh, uh, Alfred Price. And then you see Pete Wimberly. And then at the bottom, you can see Vladimir Asipov. And these are considered to be the prime uh, um, modern architects on the island. But in fact, there was a fourth wheel on that wagon about an architect that we're going to talk about today. And for that, we brought in our guest, uh, who is John Wynne Williams. And uh, John, you're here in many capacities as an architect, first and foremost, having practiced the discipline for your life. Mm -hmm. You're also a fellow Dokomomo member and uh, very involved in historic Hawaii. So thank you for being here sure. today. So who is that sort of um, mysterious man we're going to talk about today? That mysterious man is Edwin Bauer. He was born in San Francisco in 1905. And uh, we don't know much about his early years, but um, he went to the University of Southern California, got his degree in uh, uh, 1928. I'm sure he was ready to jump into a career in architecture, but merely months later, he was um, confronted with the fact that the stock market crashed, the mm -hmm. Great Depression, and there was probably no work for architects. Mm -hmm. We then know that he showed up in, um, Hon in Honolulu at, at Pearl Harbor in the 1940s, working with a lot of other architects, um, designing buildings for the uh, military. But, 1945, as soon as the war was over, he started his own firm, mm -hmm. Edwin L. Bauer Architect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you're going to share with us now one of his early works here, which is the next picture. This is St. Elizabeth's Episcopal Church. Um, it's on North King Street. And he finished this building in 1952. And one of the reasons I like this building especially is because it's a very traditional form of a church. And yet he brought a very modern aesthetic into the details. And um, you see it a lot in the spire. Um, but it just is a very interesting um, mm -hmm. attempt to bring a typical church form into uh, mid-century modern. Mm -hmm. And you like the project so much that you provided another picture. And while we bring this up, which is the next picture, it reminded me of many of the modernists who started out rather traditional or classical in the 20s and the 30s. Mies van der Rohe, for example, did these classicist villas before he broke free yes. from history and historicism and started to really be a, a high modern guy. So it seems a, a similar thing with this here. But rather surprising, this is, uh, as you uh, captioned these, 1952. And only two years later, the next picture shows us a drastic, a drastic shift towards what, John? This is the Breakers Hotel. It's on a Beach Walk. And it's only two stories in a configuration that surrounds a pool and a very lushly planted um, landscaped garden. And it was just very in keeping with what people were thinking of Hawaii at that time. But mm -hmm. it was a very... Um, very different atmosphere with that courtyard. And he also brought in one of his lifelong interests, and in I think the next picture will show is the detailing. Um, although the first picture was when it opened, this is a, a current picture. And mm -hmm. you start seeing the, the screens, the Japanese screens, and the um, louvered um, mm -hmm. uh, panels on the first floor rooms. And it, it creating this very exotic, mm -hmm. um, open to the garden atmosphere, very different for mm -hmm. hotels in that period. Mm -hmm. 
Very interesting, whereas the first project could be called sort of more uh, not invasive because it's still, you know, it keeps the opening small so it stays cool, but it's certainly an imported style, whereas this one here seems more, as you, you know, called it already exotic and sort of is also informed, I think, by a lot of these sort of masters started out working for Dickey. Mm -hmm. and Dickey, the roof, if we can go back one more time to that previous picture here, is pretty much we call that roof basically the Dicky roof, right? Right, right. With so the, these, these with the low two. profile and the, the 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 you know the hip roof and and with and, the break and and the shingles. So everything sort of very sort of a, a tropical a hat pretty much, right? To yes, shed off the the harsh sun and the rain as we had that marvelous thunderstorm. I don't know where you were yesterday, oh, I, but it was quite spectacular. <laughs> watching watching I mean, the lightning, it was incredible. yeah, wow, wow. So. So it's a very sort of appropriate um, architecture for our, our climate here. And so it gets us to the, the picture number five, which is, a, a, as you told me, a project that you almost confused with the previous one, and that's only one year later, right? One year later, it's the Hawaiiana Hotel, and it's exactly next door to the um, previous hotel, mm -hmm. motel. Mm -hmm. um, and this one, he is exploring the same, same um, use of the rock walls, um, built around a pool and lush, really lushly landscaped mm -hmm. garden setting. And it's still pretty much intact as it was designed. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's an example that we'll see all through Bauer's career that he uh, would start with an idea and then he would um, adapt it and push it and uh, modify it as he developed other buildings mm -hmm. with a similar solution. Mm -hmm. So I think it was, speaks well for his creativity. Mm -hmm. And one interesting sort of similarity is that both he and you are coming from California originally. I know. I wish I knew more about that early history of his. Yeah, and I'm sure you will. You won't give up in finding out, which is great. And sort of it reminds me of that this typology maybe isn't uh, sort of exclusive to our islands. It actually sort of comes from uh, the West Coast, from California. This sort of very sort of, um, you know, ranch, uh, sort of a, a West Coast interpretation of, of the ranch house. Uh, Eichler, you know, comes to my mind. Well, and and also, maybe this particular one reminds me of that one by John Lautner that he did in Desert Hot Springs mm -hmm. that has a similar sort of gesture of these kind of bones, the sort of canopy there. But, but then again, he, he took that from an already pretty similar climate, but then sort of uh, customized it more with a very local lava rock and and wood jealousies, which, by the way, is, is a wonderful fenestration system that the jealousies we need to get back to begin with. And then the wood jealousies, I find one of the most remarkable, amazing uh, products for, for tropical fenestration. Yeah, it provides privacy and um, air circulation at the mm -hmm. same time. It's mm -hmm. really pretty amazing. And we're going to do a show with, uh, with David Rockwood about sort of evolving that tradition a couple, couple uh, shows ahead of us. And you have one more picture of this project in the next. Yeah, the first the slide. first picture was when it first opened, but this mm -hmm. is pretty much how it looks right now. Yeah. Um, again, you can see all of the elements are still there. It's really remarkable that um, these two that are um, 60 years old, mm -hmm. uh, more than 60 years old, are both um, in such original shape. And one can say 50 years young in that case, right? <laughs> I mean, yes. They, yes. They they still look really great. Yeah. Both of them. Absolutely awesome. But then now, um, the same year, something significantly different. Next picture. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the Continental Hawaii building. It's on the corner of South King and uh, Kalakaua. And this is the building that first caught my attention that Bauer had um, designed. And I hadn't paid attention to it until I really paid attention to it. And, and the program for the building was the Continental Insurance Company wanted an office building that they would rent out, but the first floor would be their um, their local office. Mm -hmm. So they created this um, uh, arrangement of a first floor that's very transparent. Lo uh, the rock walls um, bring in that, that local um, interpretation. The three floors of offices, and then on the top was a boardroom for the use of the mm -hmm. uh, Continental mm -hmm. Insurance. But I, not only is it a very uh, classic stacking of 
architectural elements. But then, because it's on a corner, he used the vertical um, um, access as a way of, of transitioning on the corner. Behind the continental sign, that's where the elevator to, uh, mm -hmm. are. And that's amazing. I have to show you a, a, a building in my hometown that sits on a similar corner and has so much in common with this one. Mm. This is mid-century in Germany, half around the world. Wow. And when you guys see that little subtitle of the show, I lot myself to the little eye wink yes. and say, Bauta is German and means building. So I'm talking Howleys. He must have come, his ancestor is somewhere where I come from. <laughs> and so this international profile is sort of probably genetically ingrained him in. And this is probably the most, and we call this the international style. This is something you found popping up all over the world sort of these uh, elements of streamline and horizontal windows mm -hmm. and basically these sort of cubic compositions. But as you pointed out, he didn't just basically invade and came, okay, I do this, you know, and I plop it here. But with these elements of uh, materiality and, and lava, stone, and the celebration of that staircase, which in uh, a temperate climate, it, it would have had to be totally enclosed and so here, sort of, you know, celebrating the, the openness of it is, is certainly, once again, sort of tropicizing the, the international style. And um, both on the landings of the stair, uh, the narrow windows on the far left, and um, the windows, that, the glass area on the uh, landings at the elevator, mm -hmm. the parts of the, um, the glass are openable windows so that the breeze would always be flowing through, even though it's um, protected from the rain. Absolutely. I mean, this is the pre-fossil era, and air conditioning hadn't been embraced. And right. The architect were basically designing with natural systems, which the mission of our show is to say, let's do this again. <laughs> and so the next picture gets us into another building type uh, that is a multi-story residential building here that was built in 57, so two years later. Two years later. And that's one of your favorite ones of his, right? Explain I, to it, us why. This um, elevation, this is the side of the building that um, provide the walkways to all of the apartments in the building. Mm -hmm. And I love it because it's an expression of, of architecture as sculpture. Mm -hmm. You have these strong horizontal bands of white and black or, or uh, solid and transparent. And I, I think it's um, something that is, I, we know that he was playing with this because even that previous building, the Continental Building, the back side of the building looks just like this. Mm -hmm. It has these strong bands, mm -hmm. which are the walkways to the, all the offices. But he plays with it even um, to the extent of the ends of those um, cantilevered walkways are open. It's just a, a transfer, um, a railing, so that you know that he's he's mm -hmm. playing with it. He's not just turning mm -hmm. the solid mm -hmm. around the corner mm -hmm. and expressing the stir mm -hmm. um, on the outside of the building yeah. like that. And I agree, but I would, I would also add it's, it is uh, not a self-referential sculpture because that's what many architects, many star architects these days do as Frank Gehry and Zaha did, and they're pretty much formalist for the sake of formalism yeah. or for their style or for their brand, and they're not necessarily interested in, uh, in, in, in planet friendliness, where this, we were doing research and saying, you said this is most likely the east facade, so we know the early morning yes. sun might hit the actual thermal threshold uh, that separates the units from the hallway, but then once the sun comes around and becomes really a problem, like 11 a.m., these actually start to shade, so it's a performative yes. sculpture. Yeah, and, and this is an excellent time of day to uh, show the building because you see how deep Mm -hmm. um, of yeah. a shadow. Yeah, um, absolutely. And this is one of um, three buildings that I know, include, uh, including the Continental, but another mm -hmm. large building in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. he, he worked with this form on, the, on all three of those buildings, all within a few years of each mm -hmm. other. And let's go to the next picture. Uh, same typology, but getting uh, further towards Diamond Head, and actually at the foothills of Diamond Head, we see this one. I picked this building out for attention because it, not just because of its um, overall shape, it's um, four identical apartments on each floor. It's a big square uh, box, but this is something you see in this building that Bauer did in other buildings where he needed two stair towers and an elevator shaft, and he enclosed two of them on the right and left the stair on the left 
open, but it made an asymmetrical um, elevation. It, it mm -hmm. brought a creativity to the elevation that otherwise could have been just a mm -hmm. simple big box. And I, mm -hmm. I think it's one of those trademarks of, Absolutely. of Bauer. Absolutely. And this, just for the records, is the Tahitian from 1958, right? Yes. And he didn't just stay as many of his colleagues, and you just checked it out recently uh, with Dokomomo, which we'll get to uh, in the next couple projects, but he also worked on other islands. So we're going to go to Kauai with the next picture. And this one, this is a church that Bauer um, designed in collaboration with John McAuliffe. And mm -hmm. um, it's a octagon shape, which is kind of surprising, the altar, a Catholic church, an altar in the center. And this um, shape is supported by these uh, eight really massive poles that come up and, and create that line. Um, by the way, the artwork um, on that is those are, are uh, Jean Chalot. Oh, wow. um, mm -hmm. So it's really, really yeah, beautifully yeah. maintained. And the next um, photograph will show the detail of how mm -hmm. those poles come down and um, the very modernist um, interpretation of the pews. I think it's a, just a beautiful building. At the same time, I, I don't know um, how much was Bauer's contribution and how much was the his uh, collaborating architect. Mm -hmm. but. Um, he, Bauer's in there somewhere, and it, mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. it shows. And the next project, also on the same island, uh, next picture is uh, actually, now we make a big jump from the mid-50s yes. to the mid-60s, right? Everything else was that we've shown up to now is in the, um, the 1950s. Now we're into 1965, and this is the first Hawaiian bank, obviously, and behind it, you see to the right, is an office building that we'll also cover in just a minute. But he... Bauer, by the time he got to the 1960s, he had two partners, um, Arthur Mori and Benjamin Lum. And so the firm was um, Bauer, Mori, and Lum. And I don't know how much, again, but there's so much of this is the, you just can see the Bauer influence in that, that um, extended Eve line that has no purpose other than to have these cutouts, these rectangular cutouts that put remarkable shadows on the on the face of the building. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just a, a wonderful Yeah. And it just in transitioning to the to the next picture, it reminds me of a project on Kauai that unfortunately isn't anymore as it used to be, but it's been remodeled and we actually dedicated a show to it to Soda and mm -hmm. I a while ago. That is the uh, Coco Palm Resort by Very Pete famous. Wimberley. Yeah. And he has done a similar thing where basically the, the top beams project out and and then also sort of form these sort of shadow canopies, cantilever, so a, sort of a similar theme. And, and this here, uh, it also gives us a chance to refer to a very recent show here. We, we had our Dokomomo, um, um, you know, team here, um, uh, and Don representing us and, and promoting our um, walking tour that we had in uh, Kauai. So maybe along the lines, maybe you could do a little synopsis of the event. We, we put together a uh, walking tour, it was about an hour, and um, covered buildings in Lahui. And mm. it's just a range of remarkable buildings that were done in that period of the 1950s and 60s. And um, they had some um, remarkable talent mm -hmm. that were brought over to design these buildings. And mm -hmm. um, I think even for the people that live in Kauai that um, were part of the tour, they came away with a new appreciation for what was right mm -hmm. right in their mm -hmm. their own community. Mm -hmm. And here again, the theme you were talking about, it's got the eve because, you know, we got to protect from the, as our hat has to have an edge and that protects us from the rain of the sun. But then he allowed himself this luxury to, to slice it open and to give sort of a view and a feel, you know, to the skies, which is so special here. and and rain can come through, but just just that little bit that it doesn't matter, and also these sort of little slices of light come through. So you can see once again. I mean, it's it's um, it is an an aesthetical element that basically um, adds to the beauty of the building, but it is also performative. So it's not just for the looks. It's not just right. the buildings we see these days, which have hideous crowns or <laughs> chevrons or 
these no. things that don't do anything but try to look pretty. But, but these architects were, were performative architects, so everything they did, they did for multiple reasons. He was, he was a sculpture, an architectural mm -hmm. sculpture. Mm -hmm. He was creating forms that, that mm -hmm. brought interest. And I think the, the next um, building that we're going to show, the um, Lihui Plantation office building is, again, it has that same soffit, but it's um, a large rectangular building and um, two-story office building, but he didn't just do that in the simplest way possible. Mm -hmm. He articulated the bays, he, um, the um, rock wall that you see there is actually asymmetrical again mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. the elevation. Mm -hmm. um, brought a lot of that same sensitivity mm -hmm. into the what would mm -hmm. otherwise could have been just a, mm -hmm. a drive-by office building. Yeah, yeah. And after that little inter-island trip here to Kauai, we get back to our island of Oahu here for the next uh, project that probably many of you know. So next picture. Oh, I think we have a detail. Oh, we have a detail, sorry. Yeah, I, and again, this, I, I, I couldn't resist wanting to see this in there because mm -hmm. it just shows the impact. And because those cutouts are all the way around the building, yeah. it, um, you, no matter what time of day, it's somewhere on the building, yeah. you're seeing those those. Um, and because lines. of its iconic nature, it even made it as a prime uh, photograph uh, into the brochure right, right. into the documentation right. because it's okay so now back back so to now we're going back to wow we even go back to our hood because we're both Waikikians <laughs> and interesting we we share uh, you know we're rather new to the island we came mm -hmm. the same year only a few months apart months we apart. came here so we're pretty sort of new observers to what we're seeing here as opposed to our fellow board members who have been here Most for a long lives. time so for us it's new and Maybe share with the audience your little sort of um, sort of getting to know bar, I, not in person, but uh, no. And um, it, it was um, I was telling Martin that before I actually moved uh, five years ago, I, I came over here and spent time, and part of that was just to um, try to see would this work. And I um, looked up an apartment building that appealed to me, mm -hmm. and it was affordable, and it just convinced me yes, I could make this work. Mm -hmm. And um, the building was um, not one of our Bower's buildings, but it was very similar in concept. Mm -hmm. um, a a two-story around a courtyard, lush planting, the rock walls, the openness. And so I, I, I thought originally that I had fallen in love with the Bower building from mm -hmm. the beginning, and mm -hmm. it turns out, well, no, it wasn't. But it, it may have turned out that one of the partners on that building that I did um, see at that first time was one of the later mm -hmm. uh, partners mm -hmm. in Bowers' firm. Yeah, and then in the hood is the Waikiki Business Plaza from 1965. And this, yeah, we, we should already show this next here. This is something I, I just wanted to point out. It's the revolving restaurant. You still can go and have dinner there. Um, and it's not the first revolving restaurant. The Space Needle in Seattle and the Alamo and Office Tower both had those before this. but um, it, was important enough to Edwin Bauer, as you see in the lower right, he um, got a patent for the uh, mechanism. This is a, one of a set of drawings, and he identifies himself as Ed, Edwin L. Bauer, inventor. Well, this is interesting. This is the architect as inventor. This reminds me of our Tropic Hearing Fellow, um, David Rockwood, who also just got a patent for a seamless bicycle transmission. <laughs> so it's about creating. It's not taking things off the shelf and jamming them together. It's really no. about creating architecture. Yeah. And I have to say, if we you know, go back to the previous picture one more second here, it's like, of course, it looks very international style and very rationalist. Right. But at the, on the other hand, if you track the sun, you know, the windows are kept rather small. They're pushed back. So probably if you ecotech that, you get a certain you know, amount of self-shading. So it's, it's not that sort of inappropriate no. for the climate and that that ground floor i mean that that plaza with that very sort of almost edward durrell stone kind of uh concave corner gesture which is now unfortunately an h and m right which people are crazy about and i said well we had h and m in germany forever and <laughs> I'm, I'm really not excited to get an h but i know the grass is greener on the other side and we we lost a wonderful um um Mural exactly. there in the corner the in the mosaic process of mural that was yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Anyway, there. we're getting close to the end of the show, so we want to show the second to last picture is the number nineteen here, which is actually 
I can make two references to previous show, both with DeSoto. One is the um, Kaiser um, Mainstream Exotic Hawaii, and the other one was a recent right. one that we call architecture, because uh, the Legutau, which that is, um, has for us the number one exciting balconies on the island. And you, you labeled him sort of also in this phase, we previously said we architect as the inventor, but you said he was also architect as a developer at some point. Yes, at, at some point he was doing these larger buildings, and, and I don't know um, if that was true for this one, but um, he was becoming a developer owner, mm -hmm. and that um, apparently um, involved a lot of his attention. But I, I think even the, the architecture of this building with the the way the um, it's um, the top of it's handled and mm -hmm. the um, arrangement. I, I think he, it's Bauer manipulating the elements of architecture yeah. that he yeah. could work with. And no, I, it is. It I is an it's exotic, very, a very nicely delicately exotic building. So at the end of the show, we conclude. I I would have you know tweaked history and made this the conclusion, but <laughs> thanks to you, we don't do it the sentimental way, but actually the chronological way. And, and this is a building um, in 1967, and it's a condominium building and um, pretty straightforward, except it, again, the, you can see even on that solid wall on the left that it's, it's got a, an angle on it too, on mm -hmm. the left side of it, and, and the roof line that's formed as it comes up and folds mm -hmm. over the building, it mm -hmm. stops short of the other end. There's, again, it's still playing with the um, the sculpture of architecture, mm -hmm. even though it's a very large, mm -hmm. large building. So in summary, um, he is the, the fourth wheel on the wagon that should not be forgotten. And he's maybe not the most exotic of the four, but truly a best example of a very good tropical modernism. And with that, I want to thank you, John, introducing him to My us. Pleasure. And I'm, I'm sure you stay uh, on track with that. And I already apologized. I'm going to say publicly <laughs> here that I want to encourage you to work with Don Hibbert, uh, who is working with Jack, Jack Gilmer on the prize book, that you guys maybe work on a Bauer book, because it seems it would really deserve a, a publication. Okay. So, <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll, we'll, exactly. we'll, we'll keep you posted. So, so with that, um, I'm glad, I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, and please turn back on next week with uh, DeSoto again. And we're going to basically talk about uh, sun slated Hawaii and mm. if you want to know what that is you have to tune in <laughs> and until then please um, stay happy and healthy and keep uh, keep up uh, uh, a Hawaii that uh, Edwin Bauer was bowing bye bye <laughs>